In this video, I want to look at the notes on handling events and rendering data. So we're going to talk about how events work, uh, working with parameters, rendering data. And then there's a bunch of diff different topics in here on uh, when you're in React, how to different ways to do conditionals. So ifs, ternary operators, uh, mapping through sets, returning null. So what I want to do is I want to show you some practical examples of all this. I'll let you read the notes on your own, but I think I'll, I'll mostly focus on code. So the first thing that we want to talk about is events. And I have a little React app that I'm going to work on here in a minute. And I'll show you some examples. But before I do that, what I thought would be good to do is to just do a quick review of how events work in the DOM because understanding the React model of events presupposes that you already know how events work in the DOM, and I'm sure you do, and this will just be a quick refresher. So when we talk about an event, an event has a name. Uh, so an example of an event would be the click event, sort of the canonical event that everybody uses as an example. But there's lots of other ones, load events, mouse move events, blur events, focus events, there's all kinds of different events that we use. So we can get at these events a number of ways. So, you know, we can do it uh, through um, attributes. So you'll see people write, uh, they'll write an on event handler as an attribute, and they'll do it in code in JavaScript using the on property, or they'll use add event listener. So like, for example, if I were to take this document here and I were to grab the body document.body, so that's the body element right there. And if I was interested in knowing every time that this thing was clicked on, I could say dot on, and then you'll see that I have this huge list of events. So the event name is everything after the on. So if I was interested, for example, in on click, I'm gonna write it on click. Now when you're working in the DOM, and when you say on click, it's all lowercase, right? So you can see here document.body.onClick. And what on click is, is it's basically a hook for you to hang a function. So I can say it's equal to a function that takes an event and let's just console log. Console.log and I'm gonna say click and I'm also gonna print out the event object so you can see what it does. So now I've registered a click event on the body. So if I go up here and I click on the body, you can see that I now have a console log. So it shows me that I've clicked and it also shows me that I have this mouse event. So a DOM event has a name and it will be dispatched for a particular element. So in this case, if I were to take a look, if I scroll down here, eventually I'll find the target and the target of this event is the body. So um, let's just modify this code slightly. If I said document.body.onClick is equal to, I'm going to take uh, E as an event, and I'm going to console.log click, and I'm going to console.log E, and I'm going to console.log E.target. So if I click on this, uh, what have I done wrong? HTMLBody.onClick, click is not defined. Oh, sorry, it needs to be a string. So now I click on the body, cannot read target of undefined. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Oh, comma. Eventually I'll learn, yeah, I'm not gonna do this. Eventually I'll learn how to type here. Okay, so let's try this. So I click on here and I get click, I get a mouse event and you can see that I have a target. So the way that events work in the DOM is you attach an event listener, a function, to a click event on a particular DOM element. The event is dispatched into the DOM and it's targeted at the element that you have attached that handler to. So in this case, I have a reference to the body. And you can see that I have other interesting data too. Like for example, I have client X and client Y. So these values are, you know, like where the user placed their mouse and you can use these to do things like I could say document.body.onMouseMove. Every time the mouse moves, I'm gonna put up, um, console, I'm gonna console log, uh, dot log and I'm gonna say that the X value is equal to e.clientX 
and I'm gonna say that the Y value is equal to E dot uh, client Y, like so. And so now as I move around on here, you can see that I'm getting, I'm getting information from the event about what's happening uh, with that element. And how do I get rid of a DOM? Uh, how do I get rid of an event handler? Well, in this case, I could say document.body.onMouseMove is equal to null. And now when I move my mouse, I don't get anything. So the other thing we could do is we could say document um, dot uh, add document dot body dot add event listener click. So here you can see that the name of the event doesn't have on, it just has click. So where I said on click as a property, here I'm saying click, and now I give a function e console dot log click. Uh, like so, like so that would give me a function. I need a comma here. And, you know, that's another way I can write this. And if we were writing this as HTML, you know, if I said body, um, here I could say uh, on click equals, and you'll sometimes see people do that in the HTML attributes, which is an, another way people do it. It's a third way that people do it. So the you know, the event object that we get back has methods on it that we can call. So for example, we can tell uh, an event that we want to prevent it from doing the default thing that it normally does, like clicking a link, for example, would normally navigate you away, but you could stop that from happening or submitting a form. You could prevent the default event. You could stop it from propagating up through the DOM, um, etc. So, you know, there's lots of stuff that we've seen in the past. You've looked at this in Web222 and other places and you know, I want you to be aware of it so that I can show you how it differs in React or how it's the same in React. So I, I have this, let me just switch views here. I, I have this React app and I wanna, I wanna work on it a bit. And I wanna look at how to do events in this uh, and how they're the same and how they're different. So remember that we said that React uses elements that it places in a virtual DOM and that virtual DOM is managed by React and then it is mirrored into the real DOM. So when you update something in the virtual DOM, React will take care of calculating the difference between the virtual DOM and the real DOM and applying those changes. So it's really fast. It does the smallest change necessary to make the, the state of the actual DOM match the virtual DOM. So when we program events in React, we program them against this virtual DOM and React takes care of making them work in the virtual DOM for us. Okay, so another concept that's important for us here is to be reminded that React uses one-way data flow. So data starts out at the top and works its way down from parent to child, parent to child, parent to child. So we have this tree of data that's moving its way down and we call those uh, props. So we pass data down on props. We're gonna see that with events, parents are gonna define event handling functions and they're gonna pass it down to children as an attribute on props. And I'll show you an example of this from the notes. So the notes, they have this little uh, counter example. So I thought it might be interesting to uh, try building that here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make an app where we can click on a button and keep track of how many times it's been clicked. So the simplest thing that we need to do here, if uh, I'm gonna pull in a couple of things. So one thing I need to do is I need to be able to keep track of the current count, how many times this thing's been clicked. So whenever I need to do that, I need to figure out where that data is gonna live. So I could create you know, some kind of global variable, you know, let count equals zero like this, but we don't tend to do this because we want to have React manage this data. We want React to be aware of the data so that when the data value changes, we can update and have it re-render things for us. So we're going to let React manage this data for us. And what, the way we're going to do that is I'm going to import the use state hook from React. And I'm going to use this below in order to be able to create a little piece of state. And you remember the way we did this is we say use state and we give a default value. The default value here is gonna be zero for our count and use state returns an array with two things in it. And I'm gonna use array destructuring. I can't ever say this, destructing, destructuring 
to be able to pull the, uh, the multiple things off of this return value that I need. And the first one is the current value, the number of clicks. How many times has this component been clicked? And the second one is going to be a function which is going to allow me to update that. So I'm going to say set number of clicks. So I have two things that I'm pulling in here that I'm going to use. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just blow away this. I don't need this. And instead of this, I'm going to return a button. And the button is going to have some text in it. The text that I want to display is the number of times this has been clicked. So I'll say clicks, and then I'm going to stick number of clicks here so that it gets rendered when we do this. So if I ran this right now, it would work. So I'm going to save this and we're going to get a button clicks zero and it doesn't do anything right now, right? And you can see that I have a warning from the React DevTools that says set number of clicks is assigned a value, but it's never used. And you can see here I have the same warning. It's assigned a value, but never used. And this is usually a sign of some kind of a bug. It means that you're creating a variable and then you're not using that variable. So why did you create it? Probably it means I need to use this and I haven't used it yet. Okay, so let's, um, I'm just, to make this a little bit cleaner, I'm gonna change the CSS slightly. So I have a button here and I'm gonna um, put a class name on this. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that this is my uh, click, click button. And in my CSS, I'm going to add dot click button, and I'll just give it a margin of say 40 pixels, like so, so that it moves in, just so it's a little less in the corner. Okay, so let's go back to this example. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an event handler here. So think about how a button works. Like if I have a button in the DOM, how would I add an event handler to this in the actual DOM? Like if I grabbed this button here, this button, Right, so if I were to say document.query selector button, there's my button, I have this click button. If I wanted to put an event handler on there, I would say dot on click equals, and then I would write um, my handler like that, right? So over here in React, I wanna do something similar but because React is actually, I'm using JSX and JSX is really uh, JavaScript, I have to be careful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use JavaScript style naming. So I'm gonna say on click like that, on click with a capital C versus the lowercase c that you have when you're doing it in the DOM normally. So this is something to get used to. The same thing I had to do here with class name uppercase. So I'm using camel case to name these things on click equals. Now I need to put something here. I need to put a function here that I want to be executed whenever the click event occurs for this button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a function right here. So I could say E and let's just say console.log click like that. So I could write it in line like so. And if I rerun this, refresh this, and let me get rid of this, and I click this, you can see I've got click, 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 all of these, I don't need this. Every time I click it, it happens here. So you can see that this click event is occurring. Now this line is getting very long. So often what will happen is when people start doing long um, expressions, so this is a function expression, as it gets longer and longer, people will tend to break it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it from here and I'm gonna say const uh, on click handler is equal to like so. So now what I can do is I can say on click, I want to attach the on click handler. The name of this function is up to you. It doesn't matter what you call this. So right now we're saying uh, update console.log click every time that this, so let's try this now. I uh, refresh this and I say clicks and it, it's working perfectly. So this style is how we do event handling in React. We define a 
function, the callback function, the handler, in a parent component. And then what we do is we pass that function down into the child. So the button doesn't really know what to do when you click on it. Like what should you do when you click on a button? Well, who knows? Should you save the current document? Should you print? Should you copy something to the clipboard? Should you delete something? Like it, it depends on the program. So a button is a, bu a button is an element that knows how to accept a click from a user and it knows how to tell you that something's been clicked, but it doesn't know what to do with it. So the logic for what to do has to come in the form of some kind of a function and we pass it down to the child component as a prop. So here you're passing down these variables, uh, essentially, down to the child component. It receives it and it runs it. Okay, so let's clean this up a little bit. We don't just want to click console.log. What do we want to do? We actually want to update the number of clicks. So I'm going to say set number of clicks, and I'm going to give it a new value. I'm going to take the current value, and I'm going to add one. So when this function runs the first time, the initial state, the initial value of num clicks is going to be zero. And then from that point forward, React is going to manage this variable via this other function that it's giving you. So what we're going to do is we're going to give the user the ability to update this. And when they do, it's going to increase the number of clicks. Now, when any of the data in React is updated, React will recalculate the entire DOM. It will make it so it will make it so that this basically needs to be re-rendered because this value has been updated. So you don't see a loop here, but really what's happening is there's like a big loop in the background. React is scheduling the update, the re-rendering of this component based on the fact that some of its data has changed. All right, so if I go back here now, if I clear this out, and if I say click, 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 whoops, I need to refresh. Did I save this? No, I need to save it. Save this, refresh. Click, 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 and you can see that every time I click it, my button is updating. So the value is changing. And if I were to pop open my components here in my dev tool, and if I look at the app, you'll see the state right here. The state is 24. Every time I click it, this will update 20, right? 29. And every time it does it, it's recalculating what goes on here. And if you look at the elements, Every time I click on this button, notice what's happening in the DOM. Can you see this pink flash? Watch the, the value 32 right here. When I click it, see how it's flashing? That's the only part of the web page that's changing. So React is very, very efficient at making sure that it just does this little surgical change into the DOM to update the one piece of the DOM that needs to change. We define our app, our component, and we say that it needs to look like this. We give it a, you know, this is how you should render the component when the data is a particular way. And if the data changes, React will respond to that and it will come back and say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna update this. Uh, all right, so let's let's move on. Let's think about um, let's think about other ways to write this. So far, what we've done is we've sort of kept this all combined into one into one component. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how we could break this up a little bit um, so that we have some more, uh, some more details. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this code and I'm gonna make some more components. So I'm gonna make a component, a new file, uh, I'll call um, clickcounter.js and I'm just gonna rework this slightly. So I'm gonna call this function click counter and I'm going to export the click counter function like so. And I'm going to make a change to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this state up into the parent instead of having it in this component. So let me go back and show you what I mean. So I'll save this file and back in my app, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the click uh, counter from click counter. And instead of rendering a button like this, I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to render a click counter like so. 
All right, so now let's think about what we have to do here. Where should I put the logic for maintaining this state, this number? And um, where should I put the event handler for doing this? So one option is to put it inside the click counter itself. But let's say, for argument's sake, that we want to modify this code a little bit more. So I want to have the following. I want to, whoops, I want to be able to render something that looks like this. I want to have a div. Inside the div, I want to have a click heading, uh, like so. And then I want to have a click counter, like so. So I'm going to put a couple of components in here, like this. Now, I haven't written the click heading yet, but let's do that now. So I'm going to add another uh, new file called click heading js and I'm going to say uh, export default function click heading and click heading is basically going to return something that it's an h1 and I want to put the value of the current you know current number of clicks so you know you've clicked this many times something like that that's my goal so in my app, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in the second component. I'm going to import the click heading like this. And now I have these two uh, components that I'm going to render right here. OK, so now back to my original question. Where should I put the data that I am going to use. I could put the data here in the app. So the app is the parent component of the click counter and the click heading. So I could put it here, or I could put it in the click counter, or I could put it in the click heading, or I could put it in click counter and click heading. So think about the problems that we're going to have here. Essentially, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to pass data to both of these two components that's the same data. And whenever the data changes in one, I want it to change in the other one. So I, I want them both to share some data. So the way that we share data between components is we move it up to a parent. We put that data up in the parent component, So and then we pass it down as props. So let's do that now. So I'm going to modify both of these so that they accept the number of clicks. So I'm going to say clicks is equal to number of clicks like so, and I'm gonna do the same thing here. Clicks is equal to number of clicks. So I'm managing the state. So here is my state uh, and it is held by the parent and it's managed by the parent. And here I'm using props. I'm passing down a value to these components that they're going to receive. All right, so if I save this, if I go to my click counter, my click counter needs to receive this. So right away, I'm going to delete this. I don't have any state in here. So this is going to be a stateless component in the sense that it's not going to manage any variables for itself. It's just going to receive variables from above. So this thing is going to receive a props object, and on the props object is going to be clicks. So where did that come from? It's coming from right here. So whatever I name this here is what I have to name it here, clicks, like that. So I'm going to receive clicks. And down here, what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to put clicks inside here, like so. So clicks is being received from above. Now, I don't need this state hook anymore. So I'm going to get rid of it. And I'll save that. So now. Uh, not defined, not defined. So I've got some problems I have to fix here. So for example, set number of clicks doesn't work anymore. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to, I'm going to have to come back to this because I don't have a solution for this yet. So let's keep it simple for the moment. So really this component has become much more simple. All it does is it prints out the number of clicks that are coming down from the parent component. So the parent component manage it, manages it, passes it down. Let's do the same thing for the click counter. So the, or the click heading rather. The click heading needs to receive the number of clicks and it needs to render that right here like so. So I'm gonna render the number of times that you've clicked. And you can see that my app over here has updated and both of these components reflect the new state. So you've clicked 39 times 
and clicks 39. So I have a shared piece of data, a shared, in React's terms, I have a shared piece of state. The state is managed above the components that need it, and it's passed down to those components as props. Whenever this data changes, it will, uh, it will be automatically changed on props. React will make sure that the data is synchronized all the way down through the tree. So if you pass something from parent to child, parent to child, parent to child, it will automatically get picked up all the way down as it goes. So this is really good. Okay, the last piece we need to deal with here is we need to make it so that when you click on this button, it tells the parent that things have changed. All right, so let's figure out what we're gonna do. So we have a button component here and we know how to, we know how to add a event handler to this. So let's do that. Let's, I'm just gonna break this up so it's easier to see. So here's my uh, button like so. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a on click to the button, on capital C click equals, and now what am I gonna put here? So I need to receive a function. I need to call a function because let's think about the problem. I could say something like, uh, for example, I could say E and I wanna do clicks plus one. Well, that's not going to, that's not gonna do it because I need to get clicks plus one. The only way to update clicks, clicks is a read-only variable. So props are just read-only values that come in here. The way to update this is to call set number of clicks. So somehow I have to make it possible for my click counter to be able to receive this function and call this function. Like essentially what I need to do is I need to be able to do uh, set number of clicks to plus one, but I don't have access to it. It lives in the parent. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is in the parent component, I'm gonna take care of passing this down into my child component so that it can access it. So I have a function already written that does what I want right here. So I wanna set the number of clicks every time that you click on this and I wanna increase that number by one. So that's gonna cause the state to get updated. Every time the state gets updated, it's gonna re-render this component, which will re-render all of the child components, updating anything that has changed. In this case, the value that we're passing down the number of clicks. So on my click counter, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another, I'm gonna say on click equals, and I'm gonna pass in my on click handler. I'm gonna pass the function down like so. I'm gonna name it on click, right? The name doesn't really matter. The name is something that you can, you can just make up. So in my click counter down here, I'm gonna receive a second value on my props, on click. On click is a function that I receive from my parent. I don't know what it does. The only thing I know is that I need to call it. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. When on click happens here, I'm gonna call the on click function that I'm receiving from the parent. So my button isn't very intelligent. The button doesn't know how many clicks there are. This click counter doesn't know how many clicks there are. And this cl click counter doesn't know what to do when something gets clicked. However, it knows when something gets clicked and it knows where to put that value, which is really good. So we save this. Let's refresh this and see what happens. So it starts off at zero. When I click this, notice what just happened. This is now one and this is now one. If I open this up, you might be able to see it happen live. So I have an H1 and I have a button. So watch the DOM here for updates. When I click this, do you see the, the flashing happening down there? Four, five, six, seven. So the DOM is being updated because the React virtual DOM is updating and it's figuring out that all I have to do is just modify that one string in each one of these things and it'll work. This is all, you know, in terms of how it works, if I refresh this again. Um, this is working beautifully. Now let's let's evolve this code a little bit more. So another thing that the notes talk about this week 
is how to conditionally render things. So what, how do you, how do you render things so that like, how do you render nothing or how do you render one thing or another? How do you make decisions? So I want to show you some examples of this. We have a, a really good example here that we could, we could use. So let's, let's do the first one. Let's say that we'd like to change our, our click heading right now. It says you've clicked zero times, but maybe we decide that instead of that, I'd like to. I'd like to render nothing if the number is zero. So if the number is zero, don't do anything. So I'm gonna modify this code. Now this is just JavaScript. So because it's just JavaScript, you already know how to do this. So I could say, for example, I could say if not clicks, or if you prefer, if clicks is equal to zero, both ways would work. If clicks is equal to zero, I have a special case. The special case is I want to return nothing. However, if clicks is not zero, then I want to return this other thing here. So I'll save this. And you'll see that right now I have nothing being rendered here for this component. And if you look at my components, you'll see that I have a click heading and a click counter. The component is there, but it's not rendering. If I increase this by one and the clicks goes to one, you'll see that it suddenly appears. And I have this element inside of the actual DOM you clicked one times and it's continuing to work. So I have this special case for the case of one. Okay, here's another thing. Um, first time I click it, it says you've clicked one times, which isn't really correct. The English isn't correct. It should be one time. So we have another case that we care about here. So down here, it says you've clicked clicks times but we could we could do better than times so we could write some code in here that figures out what it is we uh what it is we need to say so let's think about the number of ways we could write this so another way we could write this is we could say else if clicks uh is equal to one do this else do something else so here, we could go like this and say, do this other thing. Now, a common thing you'll hear from me and from you'll see other developers complain about is, I don't need I don't need a return after an else. So if I have an else, it means in every other case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get rid of that else and move my code in. So you'll see it says, if clicks equals zero, return null. And here I have another else. I don't need an else. I can just say this. So I can say, if clicks equals zero, return this. If clicks equals one, then we're gonna return this right here. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm gonna get rid of times. So you've clicked one time. And I could even, if I wanted to, I could just say one time like that. Or I could you know, change the way that it looks. You've clicked one time. So if we save this, you've clicked one time. If I refresh it, I get nothing, it's null. So that's hitting in the, the null case here. If I click it once, you've clicked one time. If I click it twice, you've clicked two times. We could do something like that. So we could look at this code and we could say, you know what, there's a lot of uh, duplication here. Like I'm duplicating, you've clicked, you've clicked. Like a lot of that is the same. So what if we, what if we modify this code? So another way we could experiment with writing this code, let's just take this as our baseline. So we say, you've clicked, uh, I'm gonna move this down so it's a little easier, like so. Let me just break it across lines. Okay, you've clicked one time, two times, whatever. So times is something that we need to figure out what it's gonna be at runtime. We don't know, uh, we can't statically write it into this function and say it has to be this. It's gonna be one of a number of things. So what we could do is we could write another expression here. So if I want to write, I can write any JavaScript I want here, you know, one plus one or whatever I want. <laughs> if I could, I can't type yet. Uh, it, you've clicked one times. So let's, let's do the following. Let's say clicks uh, is greater than, is greater than one. If clicks is greater than one, then I want to return times like that. But if it's not, then I want to say time, like so. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm using the value that's being passed to me on props. And I'm also using a JavaScript expression to pivot on that value. Should I, should I do it this way or should I do it that way? Let's just save this and see how it works. So I'm gonna refresh this. So I have the, the first case is the null case. It returns nothing. So if you wanna display nothing, you return null and React will do exactly what you tell it to do. So if I click it once, you've clicked one time because clicks is not greater than one. And if I click it again, you've clicked two times and I get two of them back like this. If you wanted to, if this code starts to get too long, you could move this expression here up to and put it in a variable. So you could say const times is equal to that. So times is now a string and I'm just going to, I'm going to say you've clicked click times like that. So if I rerun this one time, two times. So there's different ways that you can go about writing this and you can make decisions about what you render, whether you render anything, uh, whether you render one of a couple of things. You can do that in line using expressions or you can do lots of big if cases or switch cases or any of the things that you know how to do when you're working, uh, when you're working with regular JavaScript. So I wanted to just start with this. I wanted to start with this um, short example to get you comfortable with the ideas of state props and using props to pass data down, but also to pass event handlers down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to move to another video, and in the next video I want to do a more realistic data, a more realistic example, realistic example, which does data loading events, uh, and I'll show you some techniques like how to do things like loading spinners and just some common things that use the techniques that we've been talking about here. So I'll pause this for now and I'll see you in the next video.